I'm going to put my mic on so you can actually hear me. Uh, and everything's working there. Oop, I've positioned the chair a bit far away from me tonight, so I'm going to pull that in just slightly. Hopefully I haven't ruined the angle too much. There we go. Give myself a bit of wiggle room on this uh, bit of cable here. Uh, you get a bit, get a little bit closer to me. <laughs> so, um, yep, yeah, I'm just going to move that once more. Okay, there we go. Now I've got a proper wiggle room with that cable. Something I don't really check, and I probably should. Um, okay, uh, Muzzman, Whiskey Steens, Lee Wallace, some of the hot dog extravaganza, Petrino, Just Dramming. Uh, you don't know what day it is? Too many drams. <laughs> No, I don't know what day it is immediately off the top of my head. I'm trying my hardest to remember everything all the time, everything. No, but like, I, I, look, it's, you know, sometimes uh, every day, especially early in the week for me, where it's office days mostly rather than hosting days, which is mostly Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, um, I sometimes forget which day it is. There you go. Um, Whiskey Soros, here's something for you. Um, our um, accountant slash bookkeeper with the society, Donnell, some of you may have had some, um, uh, some communication with her from time to time. Uh, it's either Danelle or Susie that you'd often speak to in the office, mostly Susie, of course. Um, but um, Danelle often doesn't know what day it is either, and she and, and she knows everything, so I'm not alone there. Um, last night, I talked about whiskies that um, uh, were special to me and had pieces of, were pieces of history in my collection that I enjoyed uh, sharing with you. I might do that again and expand that out a bit and show some others that are meaningful to me in other ways. But tonight... I'm going to talk about chill filtration. Now, the reason why I'm talking about chill filtration is because it's an interesting subject. It's a little bit nerdy, but you'll often hear whiskey ambassadors and whiskey hosts and uh, press releases and even sometimes labels on whiskey bottles say, this whiskey is presented non-chill filtered. Really, we need to look at what that means, um, what the history behind that is, why we chill filter or why we don't, and and things like that, which are really, which is, it's a really important discussion as to the importance of uh, filtration in spirit and the history of that and why you do it. Is it important? Do you need to do it? And all those kind of things. So let's start by saying that, uh, oh, well, actually, what I'm going to start by doing is actually having a dram. Now, I'm having a dram of that very whiskey I bought for myself um, off our turn, 112.49. Blackberries, bubblegum, and bougainvillea. It's, um, it has sold out, I'm sorry, so I'm sort of waving something in front of the camera that you can't get anymore. I do apologize for that in advance, but there we go. I hope that label's coming out nicely. But um, this is a, it's, I have a bit of soft spot for Distillery 112. Always so like, always so much fruit, like, and bubblegum is certainly there. It's lovely, it's a lovely, lovely spirit. Okay, and I've got my old school, um, old school water jug. I don't know if I've shown you this on camera properly, it's, this is like the water drink that used to be sold through the catalog on, um, on the, with the SMWS. There's the old school logo on one side and uh, one of the Bob Dewar illustrations on the other. Um, very cool little piece of society history, that one. So I've got some notes here so I don't get anything wrong, but I want to talk through it and I want to take some questions. The society, I'm going to start with back home here, what we do. Uh, the society does every release we do, whether it be in our... Um, even our hair assay releases, everything we do is non-chill filtered. But every, but most of what we do, of course, is cast strength, single cask, non-chill filtered, natural color. So there's a few things to go over, but we're gonna focus on the non-chill filtration part of it. Chill filtration, or filtration in general, is an extremely common um, in beer, wine, and spirits. It's used in all sorts. Um, have, like in beer, have you seen, you know, we've had IPAs around for a long time, but now we're seeing this, um, you know, this movement towards what's called ha HIPAs or HIPAs, um, hazy IPAs, then they're, I guess, non-filtered um, IPAs in many ways. And it's it's a love or hate thing with, in beer, but it, it affects different uh, liquids in different ways. It affects wine in a different way, but it affects whiskey in a different way. What I know about is whiskey, so I'm going to talk about that. So the process of chill filtration is where substances in the whiskey are removed before bottling. So that's where the whiskey is fully mature. The, in this case, the whiskey has become fully matured from a bottler, and then it is uh, then pro and then certain substances are removed to improve the aesthetic of the spirit. Why would you do that? Well, to to prove a point, I've got a tumbler here. This is not normally how I drink whiskey. I've got a tumbler with just some ice cubes in it that I just put in it literally a second ago. So they're fresh, fresh ice cubes. They're not melting yet. And I've got a whiskey that I, that I know is slightly chill filtered. 
and I'm going to, doesn't matter what whiskey it is, I'm going to pour a dram of that into that glass. Not a, not a, maybe it's 30, 40 mils, that doesn't matter. I'm going to pour a dram of that into that glass from that bottling. And this is a whiskey that is chill filtered. We're going to put that aside and see how that one um, fares over the next 10, 15 minutes. Uh, <laughs> surprise, you own a tumbler. You can't not own a tumbler, Muzz. <laughs> Look, everyone, <laughs> anyway. Um, the main reason to chill filter is entirely cosmetic. So if a whiskey is 46% ABV or below, uh, it will generally go cloudy when you add water or ice. This is considered an undesirable characteristic. People love their whiskey. Most, most consumers drink whiskey A in a tumbler and B with ice. It's, it's just a reality. At The Society, we enjoy whiskey a multitude of ways. We encourage you to try it neat. We encourage you to use a proper nosing glass so you can get the most out of your whiskey. If you're paying good money for a bottle, you want to get the most out of it. However, uh, a lot of people, uh, most people, most whiskey consumers around the world drink whiskey uh, either with ice or with soda or with Coke, and that's fine. However you want to drink it is entirely your choice. But just to understand that, the most common serve in America, I think, is whiskey on the rocks, is, is whiskey on ice. And so, um, uh, so therefore, if you add ice to whiskey that is non-chill filtered, then it forms a cloudy flock, a, a residue. It's, a re it's called a removable flock. So there's a difference between, uh, or sorry, it's a reversible flock is the correct fr phrase for that, um, as opposed to um, non-reversible flock. We're not going to touch on non-reversible flock at the moment. Irreversible flock, sorry, I should say. Uh, this is reversible flock. Let me take a sip of water here. So, the process of chill filtration, well, before I get to that, um, so the cloudiness in a whiskey is, is it's the presence of natural fatty acids, esters, and proteins in the whiskey. They come from the spirit and the cask, and they all meld together to create a lovely whiskey that we know as non-chill filtered whiskey. However, all these naturally occur in the distillation process, but also some are imparted by cask. But uh, when, these whis when the whiskey is then cooled, um, these fatty acids and acids clump together to give a cloudy effect on the whiskey. Um, so therefore, uh, it's also it can happen to a, even a sealed bottle if it's sitting in a cold area, like in a cold or much colder climate than Australia. If you were to own whiskey in Antarctica or even in Scotland or places like that where it's non-chill filtered and below forty-six percent, it might go cloudy after a um, uh, it might go cloudy after a short amount of time. Whiskey steens, is chill filtering the same as flocking? Good question. We're, we're talking about that in a, in a way, um, whiskey steens. There's flocking in, um, it's essentially the same thing, well, but it's the word is used for in different capacities in whiskey, but it is a type of what's called reversible flock. So if you want to get technical about chill filtration, uh, sorry, when, when a whiskey goes cloudy, that's called reversible flock because it only goes cloudy generally because of temperature, water being added or ice being added. But if you take the ice out and if you were to warm that whiskey back up, I don't know how you warm whiskey up, but on a stove, I don't know, or just back to room temperature over a number of hours, um, that would uh, that would bring it actually back, the cloudiness would actually disappear again. So it's called a reversible flock. So you get this whiskey, you get the finished whiskey, uh, you drop the temperature of that whiskey to zero degrees generally, zero to two degrees most of the time. Um, or in some places for blended whiskies, I know it has been minus four to zero. So it depends on what you're trying to achieve. But... Um, so therefore, the whiskey is chilled and it passes through some tightly knit metallic meshes and it removes a lot of those naturally occurring uh, uh, fatty acids, esters, and proteins. That's called flavor. I want for a second for you to imagine a fine cut of Wagyu steak. If you love your cut of Wagyu, I'm sorry to the vegetarians, but if you love a cut of Wagyu steak, it's really high grade marbling, it's delicious. What's the, where's the flavor, in that, the flavor coming from in that steak? It's the fat, it's the, it's the fatty acids, it's the protein, of course, but in that case, but it's also the fat and the, and the fat is what provides that flavor. If you remove that from the steak, if you are somehow able to surgically remove the fat from that steak and just have a bright red cut of meat with a, a fat-free steak, a, a lean steak as you see in supermarket grade quality meat, um, it's a fairly tasteless chunk of protein at that point. And when you cook it, you, you've really got to use a lot of seasoning and a lot of salt to actually get anything any flavor out of it. That'd be adding things to the steak. In this case, it's much the same with whiskey. You remove all those naturally occurring esters, uh, proteins, uh, and, um, and acids, you're actually removing flavor. 
So this is a case to say that whiskey should be non-chill filtered as standard. Above, as a society bottles all at car strength, we don't need to chill filter. Uh, if you and we have had some whiskies in, in the past. If anyone who's been a member long enough remembers 128.6, uh, it was a Welsh single cask. It was from a first fill Moscatel barrel. I think it was a six year old whiskey from Moscatel barrel. Um, it was positively bright red, the spirit in the glass, uh, like almost like a sort of, a, but it had a particular haze to it. And it's like, well, that's the whiskey as it comes out. We don't want to chill filter that out. We don't want to filter that out. We want to make sure it's presented as it always is, just as we do with all of our spirits. And that's why they are naturally uh, non-chill filtered and we don't add any, we don't strip any of that flavor out. So then comes the question. Um, would that, so just a question from Benoit asks, would that process affect the ABV? Um, the process of chill filtration, I don't think affects the ABV at all, uh, Benoit. Oh, that's a good question. I'll have to take that on notice and come back to you. I don't think it affects the ABV. I'm actually, uh, no, I'm fairly certain it doesn't, but I'm happy to be, I'm happy to be corrected on that, but I'll, ch I'll check for you. Um, it doesn't affect the ABV, no. I'm gonna say no, but you gotta understand that you're not gonna chill fill for anything that's above 46, 47% anyway. So um, anything that's between 40 and 46 is pretty tightly regulated as being bottled these days at 40 or 43% most of the time. Most 40, 43% whiskies are, um, are chill filtered. Now you remember, not even five minutes ago, I poured a whiskey that is chill filtered, that is comes chill filtered. It's 40% ABV, this whiskey. Doesn't matter what brand it is. Um, <laughs> now look at that glass. I'm gonna take, hold that nice and close. I'm gonna swirl that around a bit. Can you see how absolutely cloudy that's become? Uh, so it's only slightly chill filled with this whiskey. It does become a bit cloudy, but still fairly, wow, I just spilled some. Um, <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. I don't, don't think any got in my dram, thankfully. That's all right, I've got this tablecloth is due for a wash anyway. Um, <laughs> I get to watch myself spill it now on the, on the, on the slightly delay on my phone, on my other phone here. Um, so it, it has got a bit of, um, uh, it, it has gone a little bit cloudy, but not too bad. So this is a, like they, they say this whiskey is particularly is a little bit chill filtered, but so this is, that, that's the effect they wanted, they want to eliminate. They want people to not have that effect happen to their whiskey essentially for it not to be, uh, for it not to go cloudy because the cloudiness is considered aesthetically unpleasing, whereas it doesn't actually affect the flavor. So, and if, like I said, if you take the ice out, it goes back to clear again, but I just want to make this clear. Everything to do with chill filtration um, is aesthetic, not flavor, nothing else, just aesthetics of making sure that whiskey looks clear and cut, uh, clear with ice in it uh, or clear with water added. I've added some whiskey, I've added some water to um, to society drams before and they, they, do, they do cloud up a bit, especially if they're a bit lower proof. It doesn't affect it, it's still just an enjoyable whiskey. Speaking of which, I'm gonna have a taste of this one. Whiskey Scenes asks, have you ever tasted chill filtered and non-chill filtered of the same whiskey side by side? Whiskey Steens, no, I haven't. And I don't know if anyone really has outside of master blenders and, and um, people who work directly in distilleries. The reason I say that is because there's no such thing really, well, there has been a couple of examples of, of core range bottlings. If I recall correctly, there was an Abelau, there's Abelau 12 year old, and there used to be, they don't make it anymore, but there used to be an Abelau 12 NCF version. It was an Abelau 12 non-chill filtered version, but they bottled that at 48% if I recall correctly. So therefore the core range one was 40, this was 48. So are you really comparing apples to apples if you're doing a side by side of those? That's about as close an example I can think of off the top of my head. Um, however, my last point which I want to make on this um, is, is it good or bad to chill filter? Now, I've said that I think it's a bit redundant because it's just for aesthetic purposes. And if you bottle it a bit higher proof, which means a bit higher flavor, a bit more of the alcohol coming through, um, and actually the alcohol has its own flavor as well, but we'll come to that in another, another session. But if you bottle it a bit higher proof, then you're not having to chill filter in the first place. So with that, armed with that knowledge, um, is it good or bad? Uh, well, here's the thing, Whiskey Steens, here's the thing, Tim. Um, it's not, um, there's been blind tests done, like proper, like proper conducted blind tests by the Scotch Whiskey Research Institute, by the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy, by a few others um, that have been properly conducted blind tests 
comparing chill filtered whiskey to non chill filtered whiskey of the same type. They're not commercially available, of course, but they were proper, uh, I guess, scientific tests. And most, I think, if not all people, couldn't actually identify the difference uh, on a blind tasting. I think one or two could, but it, you, you've got to really sort of, there's outliers to every example of like that. But so there's, there's arguments to be made that if it doesn't make any difference to the taste, why do it at all? You're adding an extra stage of complexity to your operation. There's reasons, it's all, again, it all comes down to aesthetic and how people are going to drink it. And um, if you're bottling it at lower proof, which they all are for who do, then um, then you're, of course, you know, you're going to be, it's a lower taxable product, therefore it's cheaper on the shelf. Um, so that's one thing, core thing to remember there. So that's really one to touch on chill filtration. In a nutshell, it's minus four to zero degree, uh, fine mesh, cold filtration of finished product to eliminate, uh, to remove the, the process of removing esters, proteins, and, and acids from the spirit. But that's called removing flavor, in my opinion. I There's arguments to be made both ways, but I would say that um, uh, a, bit, a researched opinion for myself is that I think that removes flavor. Um, let's grab some of these other questions. Uh, Tassie SMWS festive event. Uh, Mr. Kareem, 33. Again, keep your keep your eyes peeled. We're working on a few things, Mark. Um, I do apologize. There's all sorts of machinations happening at the moment around things like that, so we're working on it, I promise. Um, Mount Boy joined. Mount Boy, we're just finishing up, actually. We're just talking about chill filtration tonight. Not a big live stream tonight. Uh, just a chance for me to talk to you about something a little bit nerdy. And just on my personal opinion, just to finish up on that of chill filtration, I love that the society doesn't chill filter anything. We don't need to. It, it's a natural presentation of that spirit. Um, however, uh, you may, you may like to experiment, try some chill filtered whiskeys. For me, most of the time they taste a little bit thin and, uh, and that's all in the mouthfeel. It's not so much in the flavor or the proof. It has more to do with the thinness of the spirit. You're removing that fat, you're removing that flavor, you're removing the fullness, you're removing that mouthfeel. So that would be my, um, my two cents on that. Um, Textbooks say it does not alter ABV. I was right. There you go. Muzman78, thank you so much, Muz. Um, I didn't think it altered ABV, um, so thanks for checking up on that. Um, but it's it's it was one that I just wasn't entirely sure on. Um, Caribbean Whiskey Drinker and Dram joined. Good to see you both. Um, so yeah, this is, this is, like I say, my nightly live stream, just to talk about a little topic each time, have a bit of fun, have a Dram. I'd love to know what you're dramming on. If you um, you can always watch this again up in the stories uh, in our Instagram, or you can watch this on YouTube later tonight when we'll get the upload up. And um, happy out turn week we've just had um, the week before, and I'll um, I'll be um, yeah I'll be back tomorrow night. And uh, thank you so much as always for tuning in. If you've if you've got any topics you want us to discuss, if you've got any questions, you can shoot them through in direct messenger on Instagram. And uh, I'll, I'll always get to them and we'll, we'll incorporate them in a big session. And I've got some more special guests coming for some more um, guest sessions on here on Instagram as well, which is great for the live sessions. Um, oh, you're out torn. Orders arrived today. Thanks, Mr. Grimm. Good to, good to see you, mate. Post the order up in the group. I'd love to see what you got in the, uh, in the Facebook group. I, I love your photos, by the way, Mark. They're, always, they're bloody good. You do, you do some bloody good photos. So that's all from me tonight. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. And I'll... Um, and drink non-chill filtered whiskey. Cheers.